The electromagnetic field forms a positive charge at the front of the neutron and a negative charge at the rear, just a partial temporary charge proportional to the acceleration. If it got to full charge, the neutron would disintegrate into an electron, proton, and antineutrino. Understand that I'm slinging my own shit here. This is not in the standard model. If the foregoing is true, rotating a mass will cause all its neutrons to point a positive charge towards the axis of rotation and a negative charge towards the outside perimeter. All this would be in the plane of rotation and consistent with the presently known laws of physics. However, when this rotation occurs in the presence of a uniform magnetic field, the now somewhat separated neutron charges each form an effective solenoid, one of which is turning in the appropriate direction with respect to the right-hand rule in the applied magnetic field, and the other in the inappropriate direction. This would be similar to the effect of charged solar wind particles bouncing from one pole of the Earth's magnetic field to the other. When they circle the Earth's magnetic field lines, they form an effective solenoid, whose appropriate magnetic field opposes the Earth's, hence the bounce. Thus, the neutron's positive charge solenoid might be directed in an overall upwards direction and the negative downwards in the presence of an applied magnetic field, thereby redirecting the centripetal vector of each neutron out of the plane of rotation. I am here assuming that each charge will drag its associated mass with it. This is to be expected, because when a particle is accelerated by gravity, its charge is carried along with the mass of the particle. And, when a charged particle is accelerated toward another charge, its mass is dragged along with it as well. I'm just assuming that a temporary charge differential within a neutral particle will similarly drag a mass with it. If this is so, the apparatus will violate linear momentum conservation and move through space without throwing anything out in the opposite direction. Well, I said I was slinging my own shit here. But given my interpretation of inertia, gravity, and the weak interaction, as given in my tome, The Nature of Existence, you can easily see where I'm coming from. And, after all, they're doing it, so what's the trick anyway? I mean, what are the actual fundamental mechanics? Not just some words made up to name what they're doing. I've designed a cheap experiment to test this hypothesis, and I'll show the results at the end of this video. If it works, I'll have to change my shorts. But I'm not going to hold my breath. I'll just have to do it and eat the results. If it works, it would constitute an impulse engine, because the kinetic energy of an object so powered would increase as the mass times acceleration times time which is called impulse in physics. Normally, the kinetic energy is determined by mass times acceleration times distance, which is called work. It would necessarily also lead to a violation of energy conservation. That is, the kinetic energy of a craft so powered would necessarily exceed the amount of energy put into accelerating it at some point in the acceleration, since the impulse engine has a linear output and the kinetic energy of the craft is a nonlinear function, namely the square of the velocity. If linear momentum conservation goes, it logically follows that angular momentum and energy conservation must go as well. An impulse engine would constitute one half of the UFO problem. The other half I can't experiment on because of high cost. They would involve superconductors and superfluids. But I can describe the effects and an experiment to put the matter to test.
We'd like to have a warp drive to go with our impulse engine. That way, we could exceed the velocity of light by applying our impulse engine within the warp field. So, we must design an actual warp field that could work, and which is more than just a bunch of words. We want an actual physical model of how it works, with understandable details, an experimentally disprovable hypothesis. I have one. Here it is. I wish to create a spindle-shaped field around my craft, within which the fine structure constant is increased so as to facilitate faster-than-light movement. The fine structure constant is the measure of the elasticity of space, and if it is increased, light velocity will increase as well, like a wave traveling down a tightened string. The lead point of the spindle parts the normal space before it at light velocity, which is not forbidden, while the spindle itself can go faster than light due to the simple geometry involved. One consequence of increasing the fine structure constant locally would be that whoever was inside of it would age faster than those outside. You could take a heavier G-load as well, because you'd be that much stronger too. When you return from your super-fast journey, you could be the same age as your twin who stayed behind. You started out aging faster, then slowed your aging back to normal rate, by approaching your limiting velocity of 10 times light velocity. To increase the fine structure constant, we need to stretch or compress the electromagnetic field in a big way. To do this, we need an intense magnetic field. I don't believe the speed of light has been increased experimentally anywhere, but it has been decreased, so, hey, it could happen. What I propose is to rotate a superconductor and then run a current through it in the opposite direction. Thus, the positively charged protons will go one way and the negatively charged electrons will go the other way and the resultant magnetic fields will reinforce each other. When I say opposite, I mean that the bulk of the mass involved goes one way relative to the backdrop of stars and the lighter electron current goes in the other direction and has movement in that direction relative to the backdrop of stars as well. Now, a big problem is the electron drift velocity, which is disgustingly slow, like maybe one millimeter per minute, or is it an hour? Anyway, if we could get the drift velocity up to, say, 10 meters per second, we'd probably have huge magnetic fields. The only way I can think of to do this is to run a superfluid in an extremely thin tube so that the random directions the electrons might take are inhibited in the vertical and lateral directions, yet allowable in the forward and rearward direction. In theory, it ought to go faster in a thin tube than a thick one, with the complete absence of thermal resistance. Once we have a super-duper magnetic field, we have to go back to my own theoretical underpinnings, not the standard model. In my model, the electrons and protons should have a gravitational spin with an axis aligned in the direction of motion. They would be opposite spins and would reinforce each other if they go in opposite directions, as I described previously. This would form a toroidal field with an input and output hole through the axis of the donut. In the input hole, it would suck things up gravitationally rather than magnetically, while from the output hole, it would blow things away gravitationally rather than magnetically.